Somewhere beneath the stones of the Armenian highlands, a whisper remains, not in parchment, not in myth, but in the marrow of bone, sealed in time. In 2017, scientists began sequencing the DNA of ancient human remains uncovered from across Armenia and Artsakh. These bones, drawn from 19 archaeological sites, stretched back nearly 8,000 years, through the Neolithic, the Bronze Age, the rise and fall of kingdoms, and deep into the medieval past. What they found wasn't just surprising. It defied what we thought was possible. Modern Armenians were not distantly related to these ancient ancestors. They were almost genetically identical. The match was so precise, so unusually stable, that geneticists called it one of the strongest examples of uninterrupted human continuity in the entire Near East. For over 70 centuries, the people of these highlands carried the same genetic signature. Through invasions, famines, genocides, and empire after empire rising and collapsing around them, the blood of Armenia remained unchanged. Now step outside these mountains. Travel east, west, south, into Mesopotamia, Anatolia, the Levant. You'll see something very different. There, the genetic record is chaotic. Cultures vanished, languages died, entire populations were displaced and overwritten by foreign rule. But not here. Armenia became a still point in the churning spiral of human history, a rare place where the genome, like the language and the faith, refused to be erased. Geneticists call this a genetic isolate. But that word doesn't mean separation. It means preservation, protection, memory. So the question is no longer if Armenian DNA is unique. The question is how. How did a people hold onto their ancestral code for nearly 8,000 years? when the rest of the world changed around them. To answer that, we must look deeper into the ancient threads that weave the Armenian genome itself. The Armenian genome is not a relic from a single past. It's a convergence, a precise mosaic forged at the intersection of four of humanity's oldest civilizations. Each layer of Armenian DNA carries echoes from a different cradle of ancient life. Nearly a third of this inheritance comes from the Anatolian Neolithic farmers among the first humans to abandon the hunter's path and plant seeds into the earth. They were pioneers of agriculture, settlement, and long-distance trade. Their legacy lives in the Armenian blood, not as myth, but as measurable ancestry. Alongside them stands the imprint of the Caucasian hunter-gatherers. Their world was older, colder, and harsher, rooted in the deep mountains and primal forests of the Caucasus. Their genes shaped not just physical resilience, but perhaps the fierce independence that would mark Armenians for millennia to come. From the south came the Levantine Neolithic farmers. These were the builders of early cities, the carriers of ritual, the hands that raised stone temples in places like Jericho and Byblos. Their genetic signature in Armenians ties the highlands to the oldest human settlements near the Mediterranean and the Holy Lands, and from the east entered the Iranian Neolithic component, civilizations that would give rise to metallurgy, ziggurats, and the earliest codes of law. Their presence in the Armenian gene pool reveals ancient bridges between the Armenian plateau and the Fertile Crescent. Together, these ancestral streams didn't mix at random. They fused with unusual precision, forming a stable, balanced composition that hasn't been disrupted since the end of the Bronze Age. Unlike other regions, where new invasions rewrote the genetic script, Armenia's mixture froze into place, not a static identity, but a preserved memory of early humanity. This is why Armenian DNA isn't defined by isolation alone. It's defined by the permanence of complexity, a genome that didn't simplify over time, but kept every piece of its origin intact. 3,000 years ago, something shifted. Across the ancient world, great cities crumbled, trade routes vanished, scripts went silent. From Mycenae to Ugarit, civilizations collapsed into dust. But in the highlands of Armenia, something else happened, something rare. The genetic doors closed. For centuries before, the Armenian plateau had been a crossroads. Populations met, mingled, and moved on. Between 300 and 2000 BCE, the region absorbed waves of migration, some from the steppes, others from Mesopotamia or the Iranian plateau. The Armenian genome was still forming, still welcoming new influences. But then, as the Bronze Age drew to a close, that motion froze.
by around 1200 BCE. The last detectable traces of outside admixture disappear from the genetic record. From that moment onward, the people of Armenia stopped absorbing the DNA of others. This isn't a theory. It's visible in the very strands of their genome, like a book that abruptly stopped accepting new chapters. While elsewhere, cultures were being reshaped by conquest and colonization, Armenia entered a long genetic stillness, not because the world stopped reaching toward it, but because something within had closed its gates. What followed was an isolation in the modern sense. Armenians still traded, traveled, fought, and prayed with their neighbors. But at the level of inheritance, of deep ancestry, their lineage remained untouched. For nearly 30 centuries, no major foreign component entered the Armenian gene pool. Empires rose and fell. Languages changed. Borders moved. But in the quiet realm of biology, Armenia stood still. Some scholars believe geography played a role. The mountainous terrain, the hard winters, the valleys that protected and contained. Others point to a strong cultural identity, a cohesive tradition that resisted the dissolution other nations suffered. But maybe it was something more subtle. Maybe, after centuries of transformation, the Armenian people became complete. Not perfect. Not superior. Just finished. A genetic composition so internally balanced, it no longer absorbed the world, but instead reflected it. For centuries, textbooks echoed the same story. That Armenians came from somewhere else. That they were wanderers from the Balkans, migrants from Phrygia, latecomers to the land they now call home. But science has begun to unravel that myth. Ancient historians like Herodotus once suggested that Armenians were descendants of Phrygians, claiming they crossed into the east after the fall of Troy. Later scholars extended the theory, painting Armenians as guests in their own homeland. But when the genome was sequenced, the narrative fractured. There is no genetic trail linking Armenians to the Balkans. The DNA says otherwise, firmly, repeatedly, with high-resolution clarity. Modern Armenians are not newcomers to the South Caucasus. They are not genetically aligned with Balkan peoples of antiquity. Instead, their ancestry traces back through time in a continuous thread that never leaves the highlands. Even before the Kingdom of Urartu, there were signs. The Trilete even adds her burials, the Karerakse settlements, the sacred hills of Hyasa Azi, all rooted in this land long before foreign empires arrived. And then came Urartu a kingdom carved in volcanic stone, etched into cuneiform tablets, and raised on the shoulders of mountain fortresses. Its rulers left behind inscriptions. Its cities crowned the hills. Its gods bore names Armenians would later echo in their own. The Armenian language is Indo-European. Eurasian was not. Yet within that paradox lies the truth. One culture did not erase the other. They intertwined. Armenian ethnogenesis began not in exile but an inheritance. The people who once knelt before Haldi and later crossed themselves before Christ were shaped by both silence and survival. Even the legends, dismissed for generations as fantasy, now feel heavier. Take Hake, the mythical founder who challenged the tyrant Bell and settled beneath Mount Ararat. Once viewed as poetic invention, Hake now resembles something deeper, a metaphor for rootedness, for resisting assimilation, for staying. Because DNA doesn't lie, the genome confirms what monuments only hint at, that the Armenian presence in these highlands wasn't borrowed. It was born here. In the early 20th century, the Armenian body was broken, but the bloodline endured. Between 1915 and 1918, over a million Armenians were systematically targeted, exiled, or killed. Villages were emptied. Churches burned. Cemeteries erased. What couldn't be destroyed with fire was hunted with silence. And yet, something invisible survived. The genome, untouched by genocide, carried forward. It moved with barefoot refugees across deserts. It clung to memory in Beirut, in Marseille, in Fresno, in Tehran. Scattered across continents, Armenians rebuilt life in fragments. But those fragments held the same ancestral code that once flowed through the veins of Bronze Age kings. Even without land, they remained connected to it. Their DNA still mirrored the mountains they no longer saw. A people without borders had not lost their biological map. Unlike other diasporas, where centuries of intermarriage blur ancestral lines, Armenian DNA remained remarkably cohesive. 
whether in Aleppo or Los Angeles, Paris or Yerevan, the core structure held. The identity encoded in their cells defied the erasure of geography. This was not just endurance. It was defiance. Across a hundred years of exile, Armenians kept more than their language and faith. They kept the shape of their ancestry. It wasn't a conscious preservation. It happened quietly, invisibly, across generations. A memory etched into chromosomes, passed from parent to child like a silent vow. We are still here. Even today, genetic testing of diasporan Armenians reveals astonishing alignment with those who never left the homeland. The DNA did not drift. The tether was never cut. While borders were redrawn, while maps changed and treaties faded, one thing remained constant. The biological echo of an ancient highland. This is not just a story of what was lost. It's a record of what refused to be forgotten. What does it mean to carry within you the echo of a civilization older than writing? To walk through a world that forgot your name, yet know your blood remembers everything. For Armenians, identity was never just language, or land, or faith. It was continuity, a thread stretched across ages, too fine to see, too strong to sever. Inside every cell, there is a silence, the kind that doesn't forget. It knows the shape of the highlands. It recalls the rhythm of forgotten alphabets. It carries the scent of pomegranate groves, the toll of church bells buried in ash, the memory of hands that built temples before gods had names. This is not nostalgia. It's inheritance. Science has caught up to something Armenians always felt, that their story wasn't scattered, it was rooted, that survival wasn't just about breath and bread, but about bearing the imprint of everything that came before. In an age obsessed with reinvention, theirs is a lesson in remembrance. Where others melted into the tides of history, they endured by standing still, not in progress, but in permanence, in honoring origin, not fleeing from it. You don't need to be Armenian to feel this, because somewhere in all of us, there's a map written in flesh, a record of migrations, of losses, of becoming. DNA is not just data, it's story. And like all great stories, it demands to be read. So ask yourself, what truth lies buried in your blood? What landscapes are hidden behind your eyes? And if you looked deep enough, past surnames and borders, would you recognize the people you came from?